What do you do to remember the founder of a legendary car company like Lamborghini? You build the most insane Lamborghini ever made. In 2016, Lamborghini took the wraps off the biggest, the most powerful, the fastest car that not only honors the 100th anniversary of Ferruccio Lamborghini, but also 50 years of supercars, starting with Lamborghini's own Mura. Angular, sleek, powerful, the Centenario is the epitome of what a Lamborghini is. Let's take a look at what makes it worth all $1.9 million. Lamborghini has never been a shrinking violet when it comes to making cars. The tractor manufacturer turned sports car icon has more than a few cars in its storied history that can draw attention in even the most crowded room. They are the go-to brand for excess. Excess in speed, excess in styling, and excess in price. Lately, however, Lamborghini has stepped up to its already intense offerings with its kind of oxymoronically named one-off limited editions. The king of these specials is the Lamborghini Centenario. When the hybrid boosted Sean hits the roads in 2021, it will take the most powerful and fastest crown from the Centenario. But the Centenario will remain the most powerful unassisted Lamborghini with 759 horsepower out of a naturally aspirated V12 borrowed from the now almost pedestrian Aventador. If you were looking to get the Centennial Lamborghini and you had the $1.9 million to spend on it, almost four times the cost of the normal range-topping Aventador, you're already out of luck. In fact, you were already out of luck in 2016 when the car was announced. All 40 of the cars, including 20 topless models and 20 hardtops, were already spoken for. Driving a Lamborghini is not exactly a cheap exercise, even when you get past the massive sticker price. Annual maintenance on the Aventador can run as high as $5,000. And if you manage to give your Lambo the beans on your rare expedition, that can cost you another two grand. However, when you're dealing with a car as exclusive and rare as the Centenario, there is an ace in the hole when it comes to the money pit that an exotic sports car can be. While the Centenario is only three years old, there are at least four of the 40 up for sale from private hands already. Maybe their fortunes have turned. Maybe they need to make room for their new upcoming Sean. Regardless of the reason, the low mileage cars, all just around 500 engine brake in miles, are being offered with a $1 million premium off the original asking price. In three years, the Centenario has gained almost a million dollars in value, coming in at just under 3 million at 2.7 million in US dollars or 3.5 million in Canadian dollars. The Centenario follows the Reventon, Sesto Elemento, and Veneno, and is followed by the Sean in chasing that super exclusive realm of hypercars currently occupied by upstarts like Kenizeg and Pagani. The Centenario won't easily be outshined by its hybrid stablemate. In addition to the 19 horsepower bump that the V12 got moving from the Aventador to the Centenario, also benefits from an almost Lotus-like application of adding lightness. Carbon fiber is liberally applied to the tub as well as the body to give it a 700-pound advantage over Lamborghini's production hypercar. That combination of speed and lightness makes the Centenario remarkably quick. That means that 100 kilometers, or 62 miles per hour, comes on from a dead stop in a howling 2.8 seconds. It's worth noting, however, that the humble electric car and its instant on-torque has upended the 0-60 to 60 game. For the price of the transmission on this car, buyers can get a Tesla Model S performance that will do a standstill to a mile-a-minute dance in 2.3 seconds with four doors and a back seat. While 60 might be a destination for the daily driver Tesla, though 60 is just the beginning for a car like Land Lamborghini. If you start a commercial on the radio, the moment you lay your right foot on the floor, before the 30 second ad was over, you'd have gone from 0 to 300 kilometers or 186 miles per hour, taking just 23.5 seconds. By the time your program comes back on, the Centenario will be scratching toward its top speed of 217 miles per hour. Once again, a number doesn't tell the complete story, with specialty car makers like Bugatti and Koenigsegg in a top speed battle, offering cars that will best 300 miles an hour, providing you have the tires in a test track. Lamborghini is a sports car over a land speed car. The distinctly Lamborghini angular shape is guided by function, making the car not only slippery, but helping keep it glued to the ground, including a wing that adjusts up to 15 degrees. In a car festooned with vents, air extractors, fins, and wings, perhaps the most dramatic element added to the temple of airflow that is the Centenario is the missing rear end. Where a rear bumper might go is instead a massive diffuser with six fins drawing air from underneath the car while helping cool the engine. Air isn't the only aid that the Centenario deploys in allowing the Lambo to change direction. 
A tunable rear wheel steering helps reduce the turning radius and high speed turning stability. The only place where there could said to have been a bit of reserve would be the coloring, relying on the flat black of the carbon fiber with only a hint of yellow highlights throughout to accentuate the harsh angles of the car. Even Lamborghini can't escape the world of driver convenience and comfort. However, as the Centenario features the now ubiquitous 10.5 inch infotainment screen that will sync to your cell phone of choice with all the regular expectations of connectivity. It's not all Spotify and Maps though. The car also contains a telemetry recorder that logs speeds, lap times, and g-forces for those days when you take your rare $1.9 million Lamborghini for a track day excursion. So what makes this car so special, especially when Lamborghini has already created an even faster limited edition hypercar? Timing, mostly. 2016 would have been the 100th birthday for Lamborghini's founder, Ferruccio Lamborghini. Even better, it was the 50th year since his automotive badge upended production car making with what is arguably the first supercar, the absolutely gorgeous Mura. It's not that the Mura had a V12 or a sleek design. Lamborghinis and Ferraris had been setting 12 cylinders in harmony in production cars cars for years. It was down to where the V12 was placed and how, laying crosswise behind the driver like the dominant sports car racers F1 and Indy cars of the time the Mura had the stance of a race car and a car meant for the road. Not just a limited edition run to satisfy homogulation, but a legit road car built like a race car. The Mura changed everything, but it was the completely bonkers Countach that solidified Lamborghini as the aspirational marquee, with posters of the angular car with the weird doors lined every kid's wall in the 80s. By modern standards, the Countach doesn't sound that impressive, at least on paper. 60 miles per hour took 5.6 seconds from a standstill, slower than a modern-day entry-level V6 Camaro. Even in its time, it wasn't able to top the Ferrari Daytona on the sharp end of the top speed, and the Ford engine Pantera would give the raging bull a run for its money. But nothing matched the crazy over-the-top angular look of the Countach, including those scissor doors that were added so that drivers could lean out of the side to help park the car since visibility was so bad. The Countach solidified the legacy that Ferruccio Lamborghini set out to create in 1963 when he shifted his manufacturing from tractors to sports cars. Making the transition from manufacturing tractors to sports cars might seem like an odd jump, but it makes total sense when you take into account another iconic Italian performance car maker's ability to rub people the wrong way. Last summer, moviegoers retreated to a dramatization of the time Ferrari snubbed Ford, resulting in a decade-long war fought out in the streets of southern France during the 24 hours of Le Mans in Ford vs. Ferrari. At the time, Enzo Ferrari wasn't just making enemies out of Henry Ford for the second. When Ferruccio Lamborghini took his Ferrari to the manufacturer with some notes about its finicky nature and twitchy driving, Enzo was less than receptive, not wanting to accept input from a tractor maker. Instead of taking Ferrari on at the racetracks, they dominated. Ferruccio set out to make a V12 engine that wasn't just a detuned racing engine prone to failure, but a road-going motor that could stand up to daily traffic. This was something that Enzo was not particularly interested in. For Enzo, road cars were a means to an end, a way to support his racing habit. The end result was that at the racetrack, Enzo's new enemy Ford ended Ferrari's dominance at Le Mans, and on the road, Lamborghini started to surpass Ferrari in terms of aspirational sports cars. The lesson being, even if you're Enzo Ferrari, being a jerk might create some of your biggest competition. Though if you are Enzo Ferrari, you'll have created a legacy to survive all manner of rivals. The Centenario breaks with a tradition of Lamborghini car names that are taken from fighting bulls that won their fight, instead accenting the 100th anniversary of its founder. And what a tribute it is! That's the amazing Lamborghini celebrating their founder's 100th year. Does it make the wall of fame on your teenage self's wall? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, make sure to subscribe to The Richest for the latest videos in your inbox.